Hi everybody, and welcome to the Sunday Night Indigenous Sex and Love Show. As promised, we're going to be doing a video today on culture and tradition. Once again, I'm Edward Sear, and this is Lauren LaValle. And so today we're sitting here with Stephanie Tangawish. Uh, she's the cultural program manager at the Native Canadian Centre of Toronto. That's her new job position, so everyone Woo! give her a round of applause. We love seeing our people um, get new positions and do really well for themselves. And Stephanie has worked so hard um, as the new cultural program manager, not only to diversify the programming um, at the Native Canadian Centre uh, of Toronto, but to really incorporate the cultural and traditional teachings. For instance, uh, yesterday, or the day before yesterday, should I say, um, we also had a really special um, feast for all the different sacred items in the, uh, in the Native Canadian Centre of Toronto, and we gifted a lot of them items out to, to uh, community members to carry on the important teachings. So Stephanie's done a great job preparing some stuff that she wants to talk to, about where do we stand as cultural, traditional people on sex and love. So yes. I'll let Stephanie take over from here. All right. Well, first I want to say I saw some of the items being used today at the, at the Toronto Council Me Fire Me too. Power. It was so nice to see yes. people wearing the regalia they received. Yes. And, and uh, it was just really nice to, to, to be a part of that. Yeah, for sure. It was amazing. Yeah. Um, but so I'm here today to talk a little bit about um, sex and love from a cultural perspective and when I first accepted this you know I thought that I I was I was quite confident and comfortable with sharing you know um, how colonization has affected us when it comes to our perception on sex and love um, and how we're in a time right now where we're getting back to our original teachings and um, but what I realized is that I don't know enough and so I needed to reach out to the community and it was quite an interesting uh, call out because I had uh, quite a few people, uh, mostly women, you know, reach out to me and talk to me uh, a lot about, um, you know, ways that we shared our personal responsibilities, you know, when we go into womanhood or into adulthood, um, and there are ceremonies around it. So when uh, when the youth go from, you know. Uh, the youth, like adolescent into adulthood, there's different uh, there's different responsibilities that are shared in ceremony by the community. So by aunties and uncles, you know, where they celebrate that your body is a vessel and it's yeah. very very uh, sacred. In that, uh, what we need to do is to be able to comfort that and to grow that and to be able to respect that. And when uh, I was talking to my friend Shentz about it, Liz Ashkabak, um, she mentioned that there is like a ceremony called the Buffalo Dance, and which is something that's been uh, dormant for like almost 50 years. And so when they're bringing it back, it was something that uh, that the youth would dedicate themselves to, to be able to um, to not engage in you know behaviors that would uh, intoxicate their mind or their spirit, and to also remain um, a virgin during that. So when they go through those ceremonies for four years, uh, that's that's the time where you know the people in the community, the elders, the aunties and uncles, you know, share how important it is how we treat our bodies. Because when we're sharing our bodies with other people, um, we're also sharing our DNA. And when we're talking about DNA, you know, there's the whole thing you know around blood memory and yeah, things like that. Yeah. So we ha we're going to be if a child is created from that, then that child also carries the DNA of you know, the other families. And, but what's involved in that is also the trauma and the history yeah. and yeah. things like that. So when we are thinking about partners, you know, we want to be able to um, be mindful, be mindful yeah. of that. Yeah, but, but where we're at right now, um, colonization did such a big number on us. Especially know? with the shame and yes. stigma that has been introduced to our uh, to our young people around mm -hmm. sex and love and I'm so glad that you brought up the the aspect of our aunties and uncles who are such yeah. they're, they're such important teachers for us because sometimes we don't always feel safe going to our our yeah. mothers or fathers yeah. with this infer with this information yeah. and, and I would imagine traditionally we yeah. had a safe place to go with our aunties and uncles yeah. to talk yeah. about sex and to talk about intimacy yeah. where they're uh, where they're still in a parental role kind of mm -hmm. but uh, a much more accepting uh, position as well yeah more open communication yeah. you know you always feel more comfortable like for myself I remember uh, my aunt coming to me when I was about 16 you know asking me if I was on birth control <laughs> right? and, yeah, like that. Yeah. and I was like what do you mean 
I'm like, I'm not having mean? sex. <laughs> <laughs> She's like, come on, I was come 16, on. Yeah. 70, I know what it's like. Absolutely. Yeah, so uh, that was that was a kind of uh, introduction for me to, you know, to, um, to kind of be like that to my nieces and nephews, to be kind of open yeah. about uh, talking about sex. And I even, I even try to do it with my children right now. Yeah. Um, my son's hitting puberty, my daughter's um, going into an age where she's starting to uh, find people attractive. Not just the opposite sex, she, you know, she finds people attractive, which yeah. I think is yeah. beautiful. And so when, uh, when we talk about, you know, sexuality, you know, there's all kinds of labels and things like that that are, that are being brought forward. But, um, you know, traditionally different nations had different names for people that, that uh, loved both sexes. Yeah. Or, yeah. you know, there was different words uh, that were used. But there was also um, uh, a lot of cool stories that I've heard of, you know, of different tribes, you know, having multiple partners. Mm -hmm. Or, you know, how sex was a lot more open. Mm -hmm. and, um, and I think, you know, yeah, with colonization happening, you know, and there was a lot of unhealthy behaviors that were passed on to our children yeah. in our communities. And, um, and a lot of this pushed by religion, yeah. I, I believe, too, with yeah. the, the concept that you're being with one person for an entire lifetime. Yeah. And, and, I, and I think when we talk about our people and, uh, and we talk about how we, how we were once before, mm -hmm. you know, people had passed on, people had left to go on their own journeys, yeah. and we wanted our people, I would imagine, to, yeah. to move on in a, in a good way and to, to receive not just the sex, but the yeah. love and the intimacy that our, our mm -hmm. traditional people carry so, so sacred to their heart, right? Yeah, for sure, absolutely. And uh, one, of, one of the other things that I want to share was, um, you know, when we're coming back to our original teachings, um, like I would just encourage, you know, youth or even adults, you know, to to go back to their communities and mm -hmm. learn about the stories of yeah. their nations, of, uh, of maybe the ceremonies that exist in their nations that help them to to be comfortable with yeah. themselves. You know? But also differ between yeah. nations. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Like the Anishinaabe might not have the same things as mm -hmm. the Haudenosaunee, but I imagine there's there's a lot of similarities. Yeah, you know, and. Um, uh, I don't know what I was going to say next. No, I, I got a quick question though. Did you receive any teachings in regards to where our two spirit community members would be sitting in lodges or where their places were um, mm -hmm. and how they were treated pre contact opposed to once mm -hmm. our, our, our friends from Europe uh, had started to, 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 re to reside in this land? Yeah, when uh, some of the teachings I received on that was, um, you know, two spirited people had, they were very important in the communities because they're able to identify with both the male and female spirit. So when partners were going through um, issues, uh, both of them can talk to this, this person and this person would be able to identify with both sides and to be able to relate to them and be able to help them communicate better. To find that common ground yes. somewhere in between yes. both masculine and feminine. Yes. And man and woman yeah. and for those people who are gender neutral yeah. as well there was be somewhere somewhere yeah. for them to sit and that's where i was going to go with see i knew that way was communication <laughs> communication is a big thing that deteriorated a lot in our yeah. in our culture right yeah. um when we talk about uh you know healthy behaviors we also have to talk about healthy communication you know what is it that that we want for ourselves mm -hmm. what is it that we want for our people or how are they going to communicate without feeling shame, without feeling yeah. uh, that stigma mm -hmm. about what they want in terms of love, in terms of sex, you know, in terms of relationships? Like, do they want? Um, because not all relationships are going to be monogamous, or not all relationships yeah. are, you know. Um, it's not one kind of way. There's yeah. different routes you can take for relationships. Yeah. And I think even now when we talk, I'm so glad you brought up the thing about communication because mm -hmm. uh, the one big goal of the Sunday Night Indigenous Sex and Love show was to start to create a place for um, communication and dialogue to start happening because we recognize that the dialogue is no longer there for our people to talk about sex and love mm -hmm. and there's so much shame yeah. attached to it and not just and this is for me this is one of the final forms and most powerful forms of colonization is when we start inflicting lateral violence mm -hmm. yeah. on one another and we start adopting those westernized 
perceptions to shame people about mm -hmm. their sexual um, sexuality, about their sexual orientation, mm -hmm. and, and when we talk, uh, we're hoping Lauren and I we're going to get into consent a little bit later and make a yeah, video uh, about that because I think um, that's something that we really also need to be talking about with yeah. our young people and, and with our older people. Yeah. Because uh, you know, especially with uh, drugs and alcohol uh, being placed in, in sometimes, what does mm -hmm. consent look like for, mm -hmm. for people yeah. who are intoxicated as mm -hmm. well? Yeah, and when when I did ask around about um, about where 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 we originally came with uh, how women are held in such high regards, mm -hmm. you know, there was different stories about it. There's a story about the um, white buffalo calf woman. There's uh, and then there's other there's other traditions about how women are, um, you know, the life givers and and they hold like higher positions traditionally mm -hmm. in uh, in communities. So when it came to you know. Um, Dividing up land or, or goods and things like that, uh, women were the ones responsible for that, and women yeah. women um, were the leaders, and men, you know, helped out with that leadership. But uh, I, I, I can see I'm starting to see the shift in our communities where that's coming back, and I think it's I think it's really beautiful. And uh, when we talk about also how Western ideology or views have viewed or, or affected our community when we talk about you know how how you know before pre-contact we had close communities mm -hmm. so we had we had people so close to us we we're living in uh, like little villages yep. and so our aunties and uncles were there to help us with our relationships and right now we are so individualized yeah our family dynamics are like okay this family should immediately only the immediate family should take care of these issues. But in reality, if we think about it from a cultural perspective, we have a whole community that we can reach out to. There's a lot of aunties and uncles that are like really blood related. You have, you know, elders you can look up to and ask them those kinds of questions about how to um, how to have a good relationship with yourself and how to have a good relationship with your partners or partner. Um, but yeah, that was another thing that I wanted to bring up is that we have to um, kind of make that definition between you know Western thinking and how it's affecting our own view on how we um, how we view ourselves and, and, our and especially how we view each other as indigenous people as well because you know there's even a lot of uh, like I said we talk about a lot of violence, a lot of shaming mm -hmm. that's coming from our own people yeah. based on oh she dresses a certain way too provocative mm -hmm. or she she, um, around, she's promiscuous, she was promiscuous right. and so what we're actually doing is we're shunning those community members mm -hmm. from um from there and what it sounds like is everything you've talked about when we talk about culture and traditions is about community yeah as about being back and I, I don't think that necessarily is about the time of pre-contact I think that's really important even now especially when we are here mm -hmm. where there's so much multicultural and diversity yeah. and I think when we talk about our culture and traditions, we talk about staying together. Yeah. And uh, and that may look different now, but we also have a lot of great organizations that are offering services to Indigenous people. Yes. Um, we have Anishinaabe Health. Mm -hmm. We have Two Spirit of the First Nations, mm -hmm. O'Day, um, the Anegbe Youth Program, mm -hmm. Native Child and Family Services has a mm -hmm. youth program, and so coming together collectively as even organizations could have such a monumental especially on oh, our yeah. young ones right oh yeah for sure yeah. And, for uh, sure. and I think that's really uh, really important to, to be said yeah. yeah so yeah my I think my final message would be that you know um, go back to your communities you know talk to your talk to your family members that you trust about stories on uh, on on how you know your nations have uh, taught each other how to have those healthy relationships and talk about you know open communication when it comes to sex when it comes to love um, yeah because I think that that that's going to help us get back to that healthy behavior mm -hmm. Absolutely. And I'm so grateful for the little bit of rain yeah, that, that, really has, that has really, that has really <laughs> blessed us today. I actually got goosebumps when we were talking because when we talk so much about um, about sex and love and not enough about our culture and our traditions. Yeah. And yeah. we thought that was really important. 
episode and I really on behalf of the NIB youth program on behalf of myself and Lauren we really just wanted to thank you so much yeah, for making you. the time yeah, and no offering problem. us this great place yeah we're yeah. at a penthouse right now <laughs> with that being said I also want to make a very special acknowledgement to our new cameraman yeah, Damon Dave Antoine Dave. who is behind Dave. the films right now you can't He's can't awesome. see can't see him but we really want to thank um, thank him for coming and volunteering his uh, time and services and so this is how we stand together in unity as our Aboriginal community and, and bringing our people together. So miigwech, thank stay you. tuned. We got another episode thank right after this so one. Yes, thank, thank you so much for Bye. having me. Bye. 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 Fantastic.